Jake Paul wins a split decision over Tyron Woodley over eight rounds. So let's talk. I've got to admit that I have not seen the fight's entirety. When I was watching the fight live, my feed stopped and started, and I missed most of the sixth round. From what I saw, I, I felt that the majority of the good work was done by Jake Paul. The higher quality of good work was done by Tyron Woodley, but Jake Paul's quantity was greater than Tyron Woodley's quality. Now, I've thought about watching the fight in its whole on YouTube if I can find it. But let's be honest. Jake Paul and Logan Paul fights are entertaining. They're a fun form of escapism, but they don't have much impact on the overall sport itself. And maybe I'll watch it. Maybe I won't. I know I'm not disappointing some people. I'm not going to have a full opinion of, of, of the scorecards. But in the grand scheme of things, the fight isn't that important. It's fun. It's fun to watch. And it's fun to speculate what, what Jake Paul might be able to do in the future if he sticks with boxing. But it's not that important. Now, what I am impressed by is the undercard. I've been hoping for a while for a Jake Paul or Logan Paul event to have a strong undercard. And this had a really good undercard. Me, the fight night was Montana Love stopping Ivan Branchek, local guy. The guy's been under the radar. Look, breaking for a big break. He, he gets against the former world champion and takes advantage of it. They had a, a Amanda Serrano, one of the best win boxers in the world, in the championship fight. Heavy prospect, prospect Daniel Bois. Of course, he lost to Joe Joyce, but he's on the Quebec Trail, won a second in a row. A highlight reel knockout. They did have Tyson Fury's brother because there's talks of maybe in the future Jake Paul fa facing Tommy Fury. Not the most exciting fight, and they really should have really dropped the ball. They really, really should have put the, the Charles Cornwall fight on, on the air. The only fight on the card that wasn't on the air. He's a former Olympian. He's a local guy, a Cleveland area. Just like Montana Love, he should have been on the, on, the, on, the, on the televised card on the pay-per-view. That's my only regret with the card, really, is that he was on it because, again, local guy, and a chance to show what he could do, and he, and he showed what he can do. So I'm happy that they had a strong undercard because I'm hoping for these fights to have good undercards because on the surface, most people are going to be watching Jake Paul and Logan Paul box aren't traditional boxing fans. I think the best way to turn into boxing fans is to have a strong, compelling, interesting undercard. And this was definitely that. It was a strong, strong, compelling undercard with good fighters fighting each other. And it won't turn the Jake Paul, Logan Paul fan base and the box fans overnight, but they keep doing this with good undercards, I think we'll see a change. I don't know that for sure, but I think we'll see a change. Now, again, fun event. Yes, I watched. Yes, I enjoyed it. I'm not going to apologize for that. I know some of you peers out there go, oh, I didn't watch the Jake Paul fight. Okay. Uh, Do you want a cookie? But anyways, if you did watch the fight, what do you think? What do you think of the undercard? Whether you are a, quote, diehard boxing fan or watching because of Jake Paul or maybe even watching because of Tyler Woodley. But anyways, what do you think? Please them in the comments. I thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to click the links and subscribe and follow and all that fun stuff. And we'll talk soon.